Hey, this is Dominic with Moon Outdoors. Today I'm going to show you one of my favorite steelhead flies for late fall and early winter. All right, so we're going to be tying this on an Alec Jackson spay hook. This is a size 5. Now you could certainly go smaller than this. This is about as big as I would tie one of these on. Um, it's a little bit later in the fall season. So I kind of prefer these bigger sizes. And for our tag end today, we're going to tie in, um, it's just some holographic tinsel. Most of these traditional style summer steelhead flies, that you'll see with just, you know, standard silver tinsel. You see gold on some of them. This fly we're going to be going a little bit flashy with. So you want to tie that in at the point of the hook and you want to make your wraps towards the bend of the hook and just give yourself a little bit of a just a little tag there so you're just going to wrap right about to where the barb is should only take about three or four wraps make sure they're nice and even not leaving any hook exposed And then go ahead and wrap back to where the thread is at the point of the hook. And tie that off. Give it a few wraps. And from there we're going to throw in some silver wire. This is small, but honestly medium may even look better for this type of fly or this size of fly. Let's go ahead and wrap that in just right at the point of the hook again. And next we're going to tie in some a different color of tinsel to wrap the body. But we've got a bit of a bump back there now from tying in the wire and that holographic tinsel. So I'm just laying some thread down to even up the body. One of the, you know, one of my favorite things about tying these types of flies are, in a lot of cases, we're not trying to match any hatches or, you know, even tie something that looks particularly buggy. Um, so I think it's kind of a, one of the more creative um, styles of flies you can tie because kind of the, there's no rules. You just kind of tie something that looks good to you something you have confidence in and I really think that having confidence in the fly you're swinging goes a long way so uh, for this one I've tied in uh, a purple holographic tinsel and we're just going to cover the body in that want to make sure we don't leave any of the black thread exposed ourselves a little bit longer base to work with and uh, with these Alec Jackson style hooks you've got that point where the hook shank kind of has been bent over itself so you've got kind of a little junction there and that's about where we want to tie it or wrap this uh, tinsel up to so go ahead and tie that off um, I see a lot of tires will, you know, on both the the tag end tinsel and the body tinsel, you know, at this point they'd add a little bit of UV resin or super glue or something to keep it secured. Um, it definitely doesn't hurt if you're tying a fly that you're putting a lot of time into. 
certainly makes sense. This is going to be kind of a quick tie, so I'm going to forego that. And from there, we're going to wrap the silver wire up to the front of the hook. Tie that wire off and I'm not too concerned with keeping this thing clean at the head of it because we're going to cover that with a little dubbing ball. Go ahead and helicopter that wire to break it off. And from there we're going to take some ice dub and chartreuse. And like I said, this one is kind of the joker colorway of that purple and chartreuse. I just think it looks cool. It's certainly swung up a few fish for me and but tie this in whatever colors you'd like to. So you could get fancy and tie in a dubbing loop. You could throw some wax on the thread. I'm just going to go ahead and throw that on there, twist it up on the thread, and tie in a little ball. Um, you don't want it to be too big. We don't need that big umbrella profile like you do in the winter. So I'm just going to take a little bit of that dubbing off, throw some thread wraps in front of it, get it nice and clean. <clears throat> and from there, we're going to take a just a natural guinea feather. Um, when you're selecting the guinea feathers, you know, it's kind of a it's kind of a trip how much variety is in those packs. You know, you've got some that look just like, you know, the big polka dots, and you've got some with some pretty beautiful patterns in there. So I'm just going to grab one that looks good to me. Um, I've already taken all the webbing off the base of the feather, so you want to clean that up, and then just work all of the fibers towards the base. Leave yourself a little tag to uh, tie this in. Tie that tip in. Get enough wraps on there that it's not going to fall out. You could also fold that back over and tie it in again if you want it to be even more secure. And then go ahead and give this a couple of wraps. We just we want it to be kind of sparse. We don't want it to be too heavy. Continue to work all those fibers back towards the the bend of the hook. It can get tricky for sure. But just give it best effort. We'll clean it up at the end. Sneak that thread in between the chunk we're going to cut off and the fibers we're going to leave. Give it a couple of wraps. Trim the base of that feather off. Pull them all back and clean it up. So from there, I'm going to do something kind of a little bit unconventional. I'm going to take two grizzly hackle tips. These are chartreuse. I really like the look of, you know, like the squidrow flies or, you know, we throw these on clousers. Just kind of the two, the two married grizzly hackle tips. So what I'm doing is just sizing it to where those tips go just past the bend of the hook or even just right at the bend of the hook. We don't want them to be super long and flowing. Don't want them to be too short. 
and then cleaning off all the just the webby stuff towards the base of the feather that we're not going to use. The trick is kind of just really going through your pack of grizzly hackle and finding two that are the right size for the hook and then two that are kind of even, you know, between the t between each other, which can certainly take a minute. So we're going to tie those in loosely because this will take some adjusting to get those to look the way we want. There's a lot of tires out there that are really good at doing this. It is not an exact science for me. I just kind of fumble around with it until it looks how I want it to look as far as making sure they look even. Somewhat married to the top there. And a lot of that just comes down to the grizzly hackle itself. Sometimes you pick a couple out and you throw them on and it's a no-brainer. They just look perfect. And other times, like with this one right now, it's going to take a little bit of adjusting them to look good. And if it's not doing what you want, just go ahead and reset. That looks solid to me. If anybody out there's got a, any tips on how to do that better, please do leave that in the comments below. So we're gonna trim those bases off. And give it quite a few wraps, make sure those aren't gonna slip out. Again, you could fold that tip back over and rewrap it again to really make sure it's secure. From here, we're just going to make sure we have a nice, good-looking head on there. Before we lay down the UV. And we just got to get it close. I mean, it's amazing. When you throw that UV on, it could take the, the ugliest of heads and have them looking really clean. I'm going to use clear, but you could use a hot spot here. Um, I see a lot of those traditional style flies use black. We have a wide variety of colors. You know, like the the green might look cool here. Um, I see a lot of guys will use a, like an orange hot spot. So I'm going to use thick UV clear fly finish. Try to get it somewhat even. find that if you just get a fair amount on there and just continue to rotate it before you dry it it'll uh, you know kind of go to drip towards the bottom so you can let it drip in the direction you need and then spin it back around right before it gets too heavy and we're gonna bake that in like I said this is by no means Anywhere near an original style pattern, um, it's just some color combinations and materials that I think look cool and fishy and give me confidence out there. I really like the look of the uh, the Grizzly Hackle tips. On this tie, I didn't do the best job with those. Um, you can really get those to be married at the top and go just past the bend of the hook with just kind of that perfect arch on there. So tie, tie a few of these up, mix and match colors, whatever you're feeling, and then go out there and cast it over and over until something eats it. Thanks for watching.